This is the Steam Deck one month later. So I've had my Steam Deck for about a month now and I am absolutely loving the experience for the most part. There's still a few things I would change, but it seems like every time I come up with a possible issue, Valve has a fix ready and waiting the next time I start the device up. They have updated this thing countless times since I have gotten it and it seems like their work is still not finished. But for today's video, I thought it'd be fun if I talked about some of the good experiences using the Steam Deck and some of the things I think they need to improve. And before I jump into this video, it would really help me out if you subscribe to the channel and set your notifications to all because then you'll get a notification every time I upload a video. So like I mentioned, the vast majority of the hundreds of hours I've already spent on my Steam Deck have been extremely positive. The first game I downloaded to it was obviously Elden Ring because I got my Steam Deck right around the same time that game released. And if you're playing on PC, the Steam Deck or Linux is pretty much the best way to play the game because if you're on Windows, it has a really nasty stuttering problem that so many games have right now where every time you see an asset for the first time it has to cache it which causes a stutter it is super annoying there are so many games that have the same issue like Ghostwire Tokyo which just came out Dying Light 2 Stay Human has had it since launch literally any game that uses Unreal Engine 4 save a few like Psychonauts 2 off the top of my head will have the same issue and it's super irritating because it's a really easy fix Tiny Tina's Wonderlands just came out on PC and when you start the game up it optimizes the shaders and because of that even if you're playing in DirectX 12 it never has this stutter issue. The Steam Deck mitigates that problem by downloading the shaders for a game before you ever launch it and that has helped with pretty much every single game I've played like Arkham Knight for example had a nasty stuttering issue when you were driving the Batmobile around Gotham City but on the Steam Deck it runs at a locked 30 frames per second because all the shaders are already cached and downloaded before you even start the game. The flip side of that coin I guess that's a two-faced reference is that this is also one of the big annoying with the Steam Deck, literally every time I've woken it up from sleep or turned it on from being shut down, it has to download the shaders again that I've already downloaded. Now this is way worse on the beta version of the software, which I've been keeping installed on my Steam Deck just so I can see what features are coming down the pipe. But when I switch back to the stable mode, they definitely download less. Either way, it's downloading the shaders way too much. That is something Valve has to figure out because it seems like a software issue, right? Like if I already have the shaders downloaded, why is it A, deleting them or B, downloading them again? That is something that I think they really need to work on because it's just annoying. And I've also noticed that sometimes, despite the fact that I have it set to not download stuff in the background while I'm playing a game, it will still download those shaders and there's a very minor performance dip when you're downloading shaders in the background. So yeah, I'd really like Valve to figure that out sooner rather than later. I mean, the feature itself is worth having, so it's worth dealing with that minor annoyance. It's just like one thing that's been prevalent the entire time I've used this device. But speaking of tough to run games like Elden Ring, Arkham Knight, Cyberpunk 2077, Red Dead Redemption 2, pretty much any big open world experience that's taxing on your system, having the in-game limiter that sets it at 30 frames per second combined with the console's built-in VSync has been just a godsend across the board. It is really hard on my gaming PC to lock a game at 60 frames per second. You get spikes, you get stutters, you get all these issues that basically make the frame time graph look like a cardiograph, but on the Steam Deck, when you set it to 30 frames per second, Second, it stays locked at 30 frames per second. And when I'm playing games like Elden Ring better than I am on my main PC setup, it's just hard not to marvel at this device because it's just so cool, right? Like it's a handheld that's outperforming my gaming PC in some ways. I know the caveat is that I'm running the game at 800p on a seven inch screen, but it still looks super good on a handheld and I'm a big Souls fan and I don't feel like I'm playing at reduced skill just because I'm on a handheld. And part of that, we gotta talk about the hardware real quick, the thumbsticks, on this thing are magnificent. Possibly the best thumbsticks of any controller I have ever used, period. The flow of the sticks is perfect. It doesn't feel like I'm over traveling or pushing too hard. It's like exactly where I want the thumbstick to end up, it ends up. And doing things like twisting it in certain games, you get that pinpoint accuracy that you kind of don't even get on an Xbox Series X controller. Like these joysticks, whatever they did, whatever they did to test them or make sure they work perfectly, it worked because they are phenomenal. And one of the most underrated features of the sticks is the gyro controls that activate when you have your thumb on the stick. I didn't realize how awesome these were going to be until I played Doom Eternal. That is a game where I played it entirely through on the second hardest difficulty on mouse and keyboard. And that was a 
really sweaty experience. Like I basically had to take that game a level a night because it would take me a while to get through them because I was 100% in that game. I was getting all the collectibles. I was making sure I did all the gore nests and all the challenge rooms that you could possibly do in the game. So I would take it one level at a time. And even on the Steam Deck, jumping back into that game using a controller set up on the Steam Deck, having that gyro control just completely makes it a one-to-one -one or nearly one-to-one -one experience for me. I don't feel like, again, I'm playing any worse or dying any more often on the Steam Deck than I did on my mouse and keyboard PC setup, which is crazy. I'm also shockingly okay with where the buttons and the D-pad are placed. I have seen people on the Steam Deck subreddit saying that their B button is sticking a little bit, but on both of the Steam Decks that I have had, because yes, somehow I managed to get my hands on two of them, I have not had this issue and the D-pads have been one-to-one -one exactly the same and the buttons have been one-to-one -one exactly the same. So I'm just lucky, I guess, that I didn't get that issue because it would really annoy me if when I was spamming the B button, right, in Arkham Knight, when I'm trying to stun one of those guys who's like covered in electricity or those bigger guys you have to stun before you just wail on them for 35 seconds. If the B button was sticking when I'm trying to spin my cape around, I would be really mad. But so far, so good on that front. I'm gonna keep an eye on it. I've also seen reports of the triggers kind of sticking a little bit, not physically sticking, but it'll register phantom inputs after a while. That specifically has happened to people who have dropped the Steam Deck. I am not about to drop my Steam Deck to test that out, but I have noticed that the triggers seem to be a little bit fragile. My triggers on both of the units I've used have been great, but I can definitely see that that's an issue because people are posting about it on the Steam Deck subreddit. There are two criticisms I have of the controls flat out. The R1 and L1 buttons are just placed a little bit weird. Like they feel really good when you press them. They've got a nice little click to it, which you can hear here in the mic, but the way that your fingers rest on the triggers when you're hitting the R1 and L1, your fingers kind of slide off onto the triggers and that doesn't feel great. I got used to it. I'm kind of hitting the right bumper and left bumper with this middle knuckle here on my finger. I don't really know if that's what it's called. This like middle section of my finger and that kind of fixed the issue. But the positive end of this is that the paddles, the buttons that I thought were gonna be the most annoying feature of the Steam Deck are just totally fine. When I wanna use them, they're right there. When I don't wanna use them, I never accidentally push them. That's exactly how these should be. I love it. Same thing goes for these touch pads. They're great. I haven't actually gotten to use them too much in games. I use them to control the camera in some games like third person stuff like Arkham Knight sometimes and my fingers don't even realize that they're not using a joystick, which to me kind of labels them as a success. I think they also work just as well on the desktop mode for kind of using the mouse input, right? It's a little weird at first using the right trackpad to left click, but I got used to it super quickly. And once I started adding apps like Microsoft Edge, Google Chrome, Discord, Spotify, Heroic Launcher to the non-Steam game section of the Steam app so I can use it in the main gaming mode of the Steam Deck, those touchpads come in clutch. And honestly, this is something that I feel like a lot of people are going to need to be told because I, it took me a while to actually try and do it. And then once I did, I was like, whoa, this just unlocked a bunch of possibilities. You can multitask really well on the Steam Deck. I know when you pick it up, it feels and looks like a Nintendo Switch. So in your mind, you're probably like, oh, I can't multitask on this device. But I've done stuff like play Spotify music while I'm playing games and it doesn't degrade the performance of the game I'm playing at all. And multiple times with Riddler trophies in Arkham Knight, I have opened up Microsoft Edge. I've Googled the trophy I'm on and gone right back into the game and everything picks up perfectly. Speaking of picking up perfectly, the sleep mode on the system works great. It feels crazy to be playing a PC game and then I put this PC technically to sleep and then I wake it back up and the game picks up right where I left off. I have actually closed my laptop that I game on quite a few times while I'm playing a game and when I open it, it's like you wake someone up when they're in REM sleep and they don't know where they are and then you, for a second there you think they might kill you. That's what it kind of feels like when you start up a laptop that you close while it's playing a game. But on the Steam Deck, even with demanding titles like Red Dead Redemption 2, I turn off the screen I turn it back on, it's exactly where I left off. Now Valve talked about a feature they were working on where if you put the console to sleep and then picked up the same game on your PC, you would skip right to exactly where you were on your Steam Deck, like you would skip the whole loading screen, you would skip the main menu, all that. That doesn't seem to work just yet, but it's good enough where if I'm at home and I put the console to sleep, it uploads the save to the cloud and then if I open the game on my PC, it has that save. Even if I didn't quit the game, it does give me an error when I go back to the Steam Deck where it's like, hey, the saves are out of sync, but then I just click the button for downloading the save from the cloud and everything is good to go. And I guess just sticking on the theme of talking about the software right now, just in terms of aesthetics and the way the UI and everything is laid 
played out. I think Valve did a really good job updating big picture mode. I remember back when I was in college and big picture mode dropped and I was like, I am going to use this all the time. The first game I played on it was Costume Quest 1 around Halloween and it worked okay, but not well enough to install that version of SteamOS when it dropped. I was like, eh, maybe I'll wait on this and then Valve kind of stopped updating it so I just never really installed it. This version of Steam, I will install SteamOS 3.0 on my laptop with the partition, right? I'll keep Windows there for Destiny 2, but for pretty much every other game, I will be using SteamOS 3.0 because it's just so much more fluid and it's easy to use and it's intuitive the only issue with the entire operating system UI as a whole is getting back to the library is kind of tricky. Like the only surefire way I've ever really figured out how to do it is to hit the Steam button on the console and go to library. Other than that, I can't really figure it out by using the touch screen on the actual device, but that's just a minor annoyance. Like everything I want to do from doing community stuff to buying games to pretty much just anything you can think of with Steam has been doable on the Steam side of Steam. OS, and even though it doesn't have its own built-in web browser, when you go over to the non-Steam games tab of your library, it'll ask you if you want to download Google Chrome, it'll download it, it'll install it, it'll apply custom art for you, and you are good to go with the web browser. It's great. And this next part of the software is kind of like basically the dividing line between someone who just wants a simple ease of use experience or someone who really wants to treat this as a PC. I am definitely the latter. I love tinkering with stuff. I remember the first time I got my iPod Touch, the first thing I wanted to do was jailbreak it. When I got my Oculus Quest, I wanted to install Pavlov on it. I just like doing stuff that these devices technically can do, but they're a little bit tricky to get working. I have been having an absolute blast getting stuff running on the Steam Deck. When I saw that Arkham Asylum doesn't work out of the box, but if you install Proton GE, it fixes things. I hopped right over to the desktop, got that going. And when I started up Arkham Asylum, I was like, sick, this is awesome. I love this experience. And then when I saw that Reddit thread, where Microsoft was like, we made some Xbox cloud streaming art you can add to your Steam library if you want. I was like, wait, I can make art for these apps that don't have their own custom art. So I went into the discovery store. I downloaded the free competitor to Photoshop, which you guys keep telling me I can say the name. I cannot say the name. I know that it doesn't actually mean the bad word, but YouTube, their algorithm does not understand context. So you cannot say it, but you all know what it is. You all know what I'm talking about. I downloaded that. I made some custom art for Spotify. I made some custom art for Discord. I added it to Steam and it looks great. That kind of user experience is a ton of fun for me. It's almost more fun than playing games on this device, like getting things set up and organized. It just activates something in my brain that makes me really happy. And the Steam Deck is giving me a way to do that. I love the customization. I love the fact that I can do anything I want on this device within limitation. Like, I don't know, installing Windows 11 on this device, even though Valve said I couldn't, I was able to get a Windows to go version on an SD card. And I played Destiny 2 on my Steam Deck off a micro SD card. That felt like an accomplishment. It was awesome. And then being able to do stuff like going on Amazon, buying a 2230 NVMe drive, getting it in the mail the next day and just popping this thing open without any tutorial and replacing the SSD myself for a video. That was super fun. It was way easier than I thought it was going to be, but it was still really fun. And if you're one of these people who are listening to what I'm saying and you think this sounds really fun, I definitely recommend buying a bigger SSD and trying to install it yourself because it's a cool process. And just just looking at how things are set up in the Steam Deck, I think it would be extremely challenging to break anything taking the back off. It uses eight different Phillips head screws, and as long as you keep the order of them right, you will be just fine getting into this device. It's a really good entry point, but for people who are looking at the Steam Deck as a replacement for their Nintendo Switch, because you know it has better cloud saves, it runs The Witcher 3 at 60 frames per second, it's got just overall more power and it's a PC, but you still want that simple ease of use that the Switch brings, I would say it's like 95% there. You're going to have to learn a little bit of finagling to get everything working just how you want it. But like I said, Valve has been really good about updating it to make it way easier to use. And a month ago, I would have said it's about 80% there. So we're definitely getting to that point where it's basically a great upgrade from the Nintendo Switch. I really don't want to oversell this device because there are definitely some nitpicky issues. Like a lot of them have screen bleed. This one does, my other one doesn't. Uh, the fact that the bottom of the device, there's no real seal here. And when you push on the bottom of it, when you like hold it to plug in the charger, 
you can kind of feel a little creaking. The vibration is slightly different between the two track pads, which I think is kind of weird. Some of the time when I let it go to sleep, when it's in desktop mode, when I take it back out of sleep mode, it basically restarts the device into normal steam mode, which is kind of weird. And finally, the fact that the fan does get really loud, all of that stuff is extremely minor compared to the amount of fun I've had playing with this device. Like I have a laptop at home that is a 3080 in it, which I know isn't as good as the desktop 3080, but it's still pretty beefy. It's got an 11th gen Intel processor. It's got 32 gigs of RAM. Like it's a pretty powerful PC. And I look at that thing and I go, man, I just want to play on my Steam Deck. Like the main goal in my life right now is to try and get Tiny Tina's Wonderlands working on the Steam Deck so I can just play it on there. Because having that game on a handheld sounds awesome. But the way that the game is made, unfortunately, this is still annoying on a regular PC. If you launch it from the Epic Game Store, every time you launch it, it opens a browser where you have to give the game permission to access your Epic account and it doesn't save that preset. So it's definitely a game issue why it's not totally working on the Steam Deck. But yeah, I wanna play that game on the Steam Deck. And Ghostwire Tokyo just came out, runs kind of stuttery on Windows. I've been playing it on the Steam Deck because if you use Proton GE 7, it just works totally fine. And uh, also there's no stuttering, which is great. I've been trying to play that game on my Windows PC and the stuttering makes me want to throw my computer through my TV, but then I play it on the Steam Deck with Proton GE, works totally fine. Yes, I have to lock it at 30 frames per second, but you know, it doesn't have stuttering, which to me is a net positive. I'll definitely talk about some of the bigger changes I think Valve needs to make in a future video, but for now, one month later, I am extremely impressed with the Steam Deck. It feels exactly like how I wanted it to. This is an incredible device. I really hope Valve sticks with it because that is the only thing I could see holding it back in the future because we all know how quickly Valve abandons hardware. But the fact that people have this thing pre-ordered all the way into 2023, I think we're gonna be just fine for at least the near future. Future. 